we were um, traveling one time. We we're in Turkey, and my, my wife, um, the woman asked her, uh, you know, why, why do you cover your face? Um, and they say, uh, it, because the thing is, I think a lot of times, a lot of like non-Muslim ladies or um, uh, even Muslim ladies, they have this like, any impression that the sister wears niqab, she must be miskina, she's not too, she doesn't look too good, she's not too pretty, that's why she covers herself. So they find a sister who looks okay or looks or, or is pretty, they're like, why don't you uncover, right? Why don't you <laughs> uncover yourself? So they, but they don't understand. So they ask my wife, so why don't you... Uh, why do you cover like this? So my wife said something amazing, and I, I, I loved it. She said, Hurriyat. Hurriyat in, in, in Turkish, what's it mean? Hurriyat in Arabic. Hurriyat means any freedom. And this is, this is my freedom of choice. So, so, so the same type of meeting here. I'm the one who chose this. This is what I want to do. And this, this makes me free when I, when I do this. I don't, I don't go with the flow like this. Whatever, whatever society wants, whatever the media wants, uh, whatever certain individuals want, I, I choose what I want. And this is, this is my freedom. And, and even the woman, she was like, oh, she, she really liked it, the, the, uh, the police officer. Sure. Was like, oh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to our next episode with Sheikh, Sheikh Abdul Rahim McCarthy on Quranic transformation. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakum Allah khairan for being with us and uh, let's continue with verse number 13 of Surah Al-Jinn. InshaAllah. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem wa anna lamma sami'na al-huda amanna bih fa man yu'min bi rabbihi fa la yakafu bakhsan wa la rahaqa وَأَنَّا مِنَّ الْمُسْلِمُونَ وَمِنَّ الْقَاسِطُونَ فَمَنْ أَسْلَمَ فَأُولَئِكَ تَحَرَّوا رَشَدًا وَأَمَّا الْقَاسِطُونَ فَكَانُوا لِجَهَنَّمَ حَطَبًا وَأَن لَّوْ اسْتَقَامُوا عَلَى الطَّرِيقَةِ لَاسْقَيْنَاهُم مَّاءً غَدَقًا لِنَفْتِنَهُمْ فِيهِ وَمَن يُعْرِضْ عَن ذِكْرِ رَبِّهِ يَسْلُكْهُ عَذَابًا صَعَدًا وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا وَأَنَّهُ لَمَّا قَامَ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ يَدْعُوهُ كَادُوا يَكُونُونَ عَلَيْهِ لِبَدًا قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَدْعُو رَبِّي وَلَا أُشْرِكُ بِرَبِّي وَلَا أُشْرِكُ بِهِ أَحَدًا قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَدْعُو رَبِّي وَلَا أُشْرِكُ بِهِ أَحَدًا قُلْ إِنِّي لَا أَمْلِكُ لَكُمْ ضَرًّا وَلَا رَشَدًا قُلْ إِنِّي لَنْ يُجِيرُنِي مِنَ اللَّهِ أَحَدٌ وَلَنْ أَجِدَ مِنْ دُونِهِ وَلَنْ أَجِدَ مِنْ دُونِهِ مُلْتَحَدًا إِلَّا بَلَاغًا مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرِسَالَاتِهِ وَمَنْ يَعْصِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَإِنَّ لَهُ نَارٌ فَإِنَّ لَهُ نَارَ جَهَنَّمَ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا أَبَدًا حَتَّى إِذَا رَأَوْا مَا يُوعَدُونَ فَسَيَعْلَمُونَ مَنْ أَضْعَفُ نَاصِرًا وَأَقَلُّ عَدَدًا قل إن أدري أقريب ما توعدون أم يجعل له ربي أمدا عالم الغيب فلا يظهر على غيبه أحدا إلا من انتضى إلا من انتضى من رسول فإنه يسلك من بين يديه ومن خلفه رصدا ليعلم أن قد أبلغوا رسالات ربهم وأحاط بما لديهم وأحصى كل شيء عددا جزاكم الله خيرا When we reflect on these verses here verses 13 to 28 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from 13, or you can say maybe from 14 to 17, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about how the jinns are divided into two categories in the faith of each one. 
And then from verses 18 to 24, Allah is going to show us uh, the Prophet ﷺ, um, he relayed the message completely. And then the outcome of those who obeyed uh, Allah's messengers. And then from 25 to 28, that the wa'ad, the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that it will happen. And that no one knows the unseen except for Allah and the truthfulness of the Prophet ﷺ. So these are the main topics of these ayat uh, in the Qur'an. So if we look at any, any verse 13, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, mentions that they, what they say, الْهُدَى, That they say, when we heard the huda, when we heard the guidance, what was the guidance? If we go back to the last session, what was the source of the guidance? Quran. The Quran. So they heard the Quran, they heard the guidance. Right away, what was the outcome of these individuals? They believed in it. Amannabi. They believed in it right away. Okay? Then they're going to show us the outcome. That's that's the beauty of the Quran. We reflect a lot and it, throughout the Quran shows us the benefits, the outcomes of that Iman. It's not just something, you know, do and you're told to do, but you're doing it, and what is the outcome? What what do you get in return? So whoever believes in his Lord, so he will not fear بخصن, and he will not fear rahaqa. He will not feel any be denied his re, a reward or being denied a reward, nor will he fear being wronged. And subhanAllah, this iman when it enters in the heart, the true iman. As the scholars say that a person who has true iman in his heart, that fear cannot enter into his heart. Mm-hmm. Fear of the creation. We talked about the fear of the jinn. In the last episode. So that's the true iman when it's in your heart. You can't be scared of them. Because you have something more powerful. Okay? And if you go into the, the iman of, of, of qadr, what's going to happen to you, all of this. So whatever happens, it, it's all good for the believer. And the higher you get in that iman, the higher you're going to be able to deal with the difficulties and the problems of the dunya. So this is from the outcomes of the iman. It just says, then quick, gonna... uh, quick uh, yeah, go pause here, Sheikh. Barakallah fikum. So this is, I think, really, really powerful because, you know, this kind of ties to a lot of time we just don't do work or we don't put effort because we are afraid, will the results be there or not? So tying back to the whole thing of the Dawah of Nuh alayhi salam or our Dawah, what have you, sometimes like, well, you know, results are not happening. I'm not seeing success, what have you. But it's not like that for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the dunya, most of the time you're only rewarded you're only given a com- commission or a performance bonus, what have you, if you can deliver results. But with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you have the sincerity and you put in the efforts, uh, as the word says that your results and your rewards are guaranteed. Yeah, exactly. Very good. Uh, something interesting in the, in the next verse. Now, they're going to tell us the jinn, very similar to mankind. That from us are the Muslimun the ones who have submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and from, they said, from us are the qasitun, they are the deviant ones. Once again, the outcome. فَمَنْ أَسْلَمَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ تَحَرُّوا رَشَدَ So whoever has submitted, that these are the individuals who obtain right guidance. Rashid and Rushd again. It came before in the surah as well, on the first page. So here, interesting, when I was reflecting on this, to and he from, from you know, and he, sometimes this word is used, and he, for, for like from tahrir, for freeing oneself. So that the, the, you you'll find that a lot of the secularists in the Muslim world, they try to you know tahrir al mara to free the woman, mm. and, and, and 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 things like the, to free the people from religion, to free them from from this and that, right? But here the same, and he, if, if you can reflect on the word being used in the same way to harro. That this is the true freedom. The true freedom is in submitting to the Creator. That's that's, that's very powerful. So the the, the true because look what they said that from us are the Muslimun, the ones who submit, and from us are the Qasitun, from the, the 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 wrong ones or the deviant ones, right? So you have the choice. You make the choice. But the one who truly is the strong one, who makes the strong choice, who has the freedom of choice, is not what follows what what, what everyone else is following in everyday life here and there and all over the place. No. I'm following any what is good for me, following what Allah wants for me, and that's actually a, 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 actually a very more difficult decision to make than the one who's just following the easy way of, follow, of going with the flow as, as everyone else does. So any 
he, he's the one who's taharru. He's the one that actually is looking for, uh, this is true freedom in, in the choice. And that's why I, I, I loved it when we were, we were um, traveling one time. We we're in Turkey. And my, my wife, um, the woman asked her, uh, you know, why, why do you cover your face? Um, and they say, uh, because the thing is, I think a lot of times, a lot of like non-Muslim ladies or um, uh, even Muslim ladies, they have this like, any impression that the sister wears niqab, she must be miskina, she's not too, she doesn't look too good, she's not too pretty, that's why she covers herself. So they find a sister who looks okay or looks or, or is pretty, they're like, why don't you uncover, right? Why don't you <laughs> uncover yourself? So they, but they don't understand. So they ask my wife, so why don't you, uh, why do you cover like this? So my wife said something amazing and I, I, I loved it. She said, Hurriyat. Hurriyat in, in, in Turkish, what's it mean? Hurriyat in Arabic. Hurriyat means any freedom. And this is, this is my freedom of choice. So, so, so the same type of meeting here. I'm the one that chose this. This is what I want to do. And this, this makes me free when I, when I do this. I don't, I don't go with the flow like this. Whatever, whatever society wants, whatever the media wants, uh, whatever certain individuals want, I, I choose what I want. And this is, this is my freedom. And, and even the woman, she was like, oh, she, she really liked it, the, the, uh, the police officer, when she, when she told her. So this, and, he, it's, and it, that was very interesting to me in, in this ayah. And even if you look, for example, in Surah Al-An'am, uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, فَمَنْ يُرِيدِ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَهْدِيَهُ يَشْرَحْ صَدْرُهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ That whoever Allah wants to guide, that he opens up his heart to Islam. So that's in the same type of meaning here that you know that that it, it enters into the heart when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wants to funny when He submits and surrenders Himself to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Um, and he, w- w- then the next verse comes after that verse fourteen, when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions the the uh, after they believed. What comes after that is. Uh, uh, verse 14, the note, uh, not for the, and then uh, in, in verse 16, I want to talk about verse 16. Uh, istiqam. Uh, <laughs> now, this well, istiqam. And if they were to have uh, made istiqam, have, have, have followed what they need to do, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لأسقيناهم, لأسقيناهم that we would have given them any. The the ma the al uh, and here what's being referred to when he, when he, when you talk about this uh, uh, we hear the word ma we think water and that, and that could be and they fall under it but here generally what it, what it means is the you know uh, giving them abundant provision a lot of provision and, and, he, and Imam Kathir he mentioned this in the tafsir as well that the in the al al risk that he would increase in their provision and then sometimes what we don't realize as well. When we hear these type of verses, it's not just about having more money and more risk. It's also about having barakah and blessings in the risk. That's why you'll find someone who might be a middle class when it comes to his income, but the barakah and blessings he has in it is, is, is far more than someone who's very rich, but someone who's far away from his creator, who's living a miserable and, and, and a difficult life. <laughs> so that's something any, uh, from, the, from the meetings that we, we, we gain from that. And something interesting as well that the tafsir, the scholars, they did differ on, on the issue of uh, when they talk about the tafsir uh, of this verse, when it said, وَلَوْ إِسْتَقَامَ الْقَاسِطُونَ عَلَى طَرِيقَ الْإِسْلَامِ Okay, mm. saying that, that uh, any, so, so if, if they, it, it, it could be either if they were to be firm upon Islam itself, or even some of them said, عَلَى الطَّرِيقَةِ any, if, on the issue of, of dalala, any, meaning what? If they had any, whether they had been in this or that, and that they would only any, it, it, it would, they would still be increased in their risk. So it could be the other way around because it happened. And that's people don't understand. So how can someone be on Balal and they have so much money or so success? So the meaning, other meaning comes as the scholars mentioned. No, not that they would just would have increased them, that they would have what? That they would have, um, that they, 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 they would be increased, even if they stay upon Balal as a way of being tested. And being for and they call it istidraj. They're, you know, they're being pulled in, like they're being pulled in. It's like a trap to see if they're going to take it or not. Yeah, okay. You want to continue to go straight, take more of the dunya, but you don't get anything in the akhirah. So, or, or, or these provisions going to remind you of the greatness of your creator and bring you back. So it could be that it's very interesting as a tadabur as well. 
and the, the meaning it, it's different, but any because of the, the different outcomes. I found that very interesting. And then in verse 17, one of the wisdoms behind it, uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, what did he say in, ver in, in verse 17? لِنَفْتِنَ هُمْ فِيهِ As a form of fitna for them, to test them. And that, and that, and that if you go back to what you just mentioned about the tafsir, and, he, uh, and, 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 and if they stayed upon the, the tariq in the earlier uh, verse, that uh, what's meant by that, it, either or. So here's this, and it shows you that, that meaning, that it's a test. And whether, you, whether you, you, you're poor, whether you're rich, whatever, whatever is your, of your provision, that provision from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to, for you to be tested to see what you're going to do. And then Allah says, That whoever turns away from the remembrance of his Lord, then he will go into an adab. He will receive an adab, a punishment that is sa'ada, which is going to be an extreme and difficult uh, punishment. And then one of the, the very powerful verses of this chapter and the objective of this chapter is And that the masajid are for Allah, so do not make dua with anyone other than Allah. Don't join partners with anyone with Allah. And what's meant by the word masajid here is um, either it means the masajid as we know, the place of worship, or also it means the a'ba, the, uh, the limbs that we worship with, and it could, you know, mean, mean both of these, uh, uh, obviously. So this is an issue showing, obviously, that, you know, the issue of Tawheed, going back to the, the relation with this in the beginning of the Surah as well, uh, starting with, with, with Tawheed uh, and, the, and the Jinn and their belief in Tawheed. And it was interesting here because when I looked at uh, the different tafsirs, if you look at, for example, uh, Sahih International, Muhsin Khan, and then you look at um, Sahih International, uh, the, the clear Quran, excuse me, there's a difference in the tafsir. This is, and when you make the dev board or you have a Quran session, even if you don't have the language and you go back, this is going to make you start to search and try to understand why. Why is there a different tafsir here? So I actually reached out to our brother uh, uh, Mustafa Khattab and asked him why he chose a different tafsir. Because and he, as I was just doing my, my dev board, I had the, the English uh, in front of me on my laptop and I had j just two small tafsirs to kind of remind you of the meaning and to, to kind of get my mind into the to, to double mode, I guess, if you want to say uh, Tafsir al Jalalain, just for the basic meanings, and then Tafsir al Sa'di, which I like to, to benefit from a lot. So, the, and if you look at Science International Muslim Khan, they're talking about the jinn. And that's the scholar, which said the scholar said the sword is all about the jinn. But here, he takes it back to the uh, the, the, the polytheist, the Mushrikeen of Quraysh, in the, in the clear Quran. So, it's a bit a difference in the Tafsir. And Ibn Kathir, he mentioned both of these, and I asked him, I said, what? and he, he, he sent me that, and I, I read it later myself as well, that this is something that uh, the scholar said, some of it's meant the jinn here, and some of it's meant the, the mankind. And I, I see it could be both, because if you go back to the, the meaning, as you mentioned in the, in the first session, as Imam Razi mentioned, that it's actually um, for, all, for all people, right? It's for everyone. It's for everyone, uh, the, the, the message, the risala, the sharia, it's for the jinn and for the mankind as well. So I think it represents both of them. Um, we don't have a lot of time, but just to kind of you know point out some some, some benefits of this. If you look back into the Quran in verse nineteen, qama Abdullahi yadru, that when the servant of Allah Abdullah stood up calling him alone, calling him, uh, here the issue of da'wah mm. or du'a or the. Any, Always Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he speaks about the Prophet, and this is what's meant, Abdullah, he mentions him at the highest levels, the highest status, like in, 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 in Surah Al-Baqarah, when he mentioned him as the Abdullah, uh, in Surah Al-Kaf, as well, Al-Isra as well, when Asra bi Abdihi. Um, so and he, mentioning him as the Abd throughout the Quran as an example, and when he mentions him in, in a high status. And the Prophet, even when he was on his deathbed, also he mentioned that. They don't over exaggerate in praising me, and he, as the past nation, like the Christians, over exaggerate in praising Jesus, the son of Mary. But say, Abdullah wa Rasulu, say the messenger of Allah and, and, and the servant of Allah and his messenger. So that then, that any Allah mentioned with the high status of that, so that uh, being that's a reminder to us the issue of servitude 
is the highest, really the highest status. And that goes back to what we mentioned earlier, the tahrir, the harro. That's the real freedom. That, so uh, we might translate Abdullah as the slave of Allah or the servant of Allah. And you say, where's the freedom? And that, that, that's the true freedom. That's the true power that you were able to overcome the shaytan, overcome your desires and to, to make that choice. So that, that is the, 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 the true power. And, and, and that's mentioned in, as, 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 to, to put the Prophet in that high status. There's something interesting after that when talking about the jinn here. And that goes back to support the, the, the ones who say that, that I are speaking to the jinn. Um, كَادُوا يَكُونُوا عَلَيْهِ يَكُونُونَ عَلَيْهِ لِبَدَى كَادُوا يَكُونُونَ عَلَيْهِ لِبَدَى That the jinn almost swarmed upon him. They swarmed over him. When they heard you know, uh, the da'wah, when they heard it, they immediately went to it. When they heard the Qur'an, they immediately went to it. And that is a reminder to us of how we should be in trying to benefit in the Qur'an and, and taking our time, putting our, just like we're doing here now. We're in different parts of the world, right? Uh, different parts of the time of the day. But yet, we're taking out the time to make sure we reflect and focus on the Qur'an. And then, from verses 20 to 23, uh, talks about the da'wah of the Prophet Sallallahu and what he called to in the Tawheed. And, all, and this is the message of all of the messengers uh, before him as well. And then, uh, the verses come to talk about uh, the revelation and the knowing of the unseen and it's something that's not known by anybody uh, except for um, the what what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given permission for his messenger to know and any also if you reflect on verse 23 Illa min that my duty is only to give the truth this is what the messenger is called to and this is the duty is when you hear a messenger say that that's a reminder to us is du'at as well that our job is to relay the message. You know, the people accept it or not, uh, our message is clear. And it go back. What is his message? Go back to the verses before that. We're talking about from verses uh, 20, 21, 22. This is my da'wah, the pure tawheed. Okay? And this is my, my, my job is to relay this. And whoever to accept it is going to accept it. Whoever is going to reject it is going to reject it. And then Allah mentions like in verses 23, the outcome of those who disobey, whether from the jinn or from the mankind, Whoever that disobeys Allah and His Messenger, that He will be the ones who are punished eternally in the fire. May Allah protect us from that. Uh, so these are the basic meanings of these ayat and what we gain from it. And as you can see, because we have a shorter session, I'm going a bit fast, I'm going to be here, I'm focused on certain areas. But you can see there's a lot. There's a lot we could have, we could have focused on. We could have just talked about you know, the mention of the beginning, the, the you know, the Islam, and that could have been a, a complete topic right there. Just, you know, فَمَنْ أَسْلَمَ فَأُولَيْكَ تَحَارُ رَشَدَ خَلَصَ That could have been a complete Tadabur session. So the Tadabur, it, it, it can go as, as deep as you go. And for example, and as an example, the brothers and sisters who don't have the Arabic language might not realize this, but if you look at one of the, the greatest books ever written in Islam, Madar uh, Salikin. By Imam mm-hmm. Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, which is the different levels of Iyaka na'budu wa Iyaka nasta'in. Pay attention to the title and you understand what I'm talking about. That's the Tadabur. And I ask the brothers and sisters who are watching to pause it and to think about that. Where's the Tadabur and what I just mentioned? about You can go as deep as you want. And maybe even one verse. This entire book that Imam Ibn Qayyim wrote, it's Mudar al-Salikin, and the manazil, the levels of iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. So what is the book about? It's in four volumes and some of it in five volumes, depending on the print. About the levels of iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. So not about Surah Al-Fatiha, no. just about that one verse. That shows you how deep you can actually go into the book. And he took out all the levels of the one who is on his path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that, that shows you how deep you can go. And we've just been trying here, obviously, in these sessions... You know, some things that popped into my head, there were some developers that I had. Um, let, let me put you on the spot, Sheikh. Okay. So, yeah. so the, this that you mentioned, so actually one of the things that we are doing, we, we release it once a month, is uh, we're just going through a summary of that book, uh, Alexir, and uh, we just do like one stage per episode, what have you. So I'm going to put you on the spot, and inshallah, hopefully after Ramadan, Perhaps we can inshallah. do a session on uh, one of those uh, levels, of, uh, inshallah. I, I, would, I, would, I would love to, inshallah. 
So, yeah. so I just want to quickly uh, summarize a bit of what you have said, inshallah, as well. Um, so, again, just starting from the, the point of uh, uh, which which you had actually highlighted several times, just want to take another moment to do that, is that to listening and to then, you know, bringing in the Iman, to have Iman on that, which as we know is like, not just a belief, but then you're actually doing that action as well. A lot of the things which we have, and even a lot of non-Muslims are talking about is, we just consume knowledge a lot these days in different forms and what have you. But, and we think that we are progressing, right? But very rarely we think, hey, I've been learning this thing. I'm watching these short videos, long videos, this, that. What What's changing? Am I actually applying it in my life uh, or not? And I really liked about your point about uh, the Hurriya, right? That when, when you're actually freeing yourself and you're submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, becoming an abd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are actually submitting to one. Now you have one criteria instead of, you know, fulfilling your desires, which are changing all the time and the culture and the friends and this and that. And even in the non-Muslim space, there's actually a very famous book and, you know, whole business built around it. And he's calling it discipline equals freedom. So that, that's, uh, you know, from that perspective, uh, I think an interesting uh, observation there. It's, it's, the, it's the same meaning as we're talking about now. Exactly. Yes. We talking, discipline and, and equals freedom at the same time for us. You know, practicing and being devoted equals freedom as well. So, uh, exactly. Beautiful. Amazing. And uh, I think verse number 17 is really, really uh, important. And, and uh, uh, so the, the point about that, look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test you with the increase of wealth and the increase of resources and what have you. But the criteria, that is not an indicator, as you mentioned, it's not an indication of does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you or not, because that could be happening as part of istidraj of, you know, just letting you be, you know, uh, more deviated and more misguided and continuing with your transgression. Or it could be a reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the, the believer in this world. But the criteria, is, as it's mentioned, is that is it causing you the irad, turning away from the dhikr and the remembrance and obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or is it causing you to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That's the criteria that you want to see that as Allah is giving me more, where am I going, right? Or as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is restricting my provision, where am I going? Um, and I think uh, verse number 22 as well, like this is something that we are just afraid of the people around us, you know, corporations or business owners, what have you, that what would happen if I start obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? The, you mentioned the topic of hijab or the beard or, you know, sticking to your salah, what have you. Many times people think, oh, if I do that, I'm going to lose out on my business network or business opportunities and this and that. And as uh, you know, it reminds us verse number 22 that look, Allah, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, wants something harmful to come to you, then no one can protect you. All these alliances and business partners or uh, collaborators, what have you, they will not be able to bring any benefit to you except if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, wants that to happen for you or not. Excellent. Very nice one. So, yep. um, so did you have anything else uh, or are we wrapping it up? That's it, inshallah. We can wrap up. Jazakum al-khayr and Sheikh. Really appreciate it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put it on your scales of good deeds and make it beneficial uh, for the people watching, inshallah. Barakallah. Jazakum al-khayr and